Stand and join us if you are able for our first congregational song, Take My Life.
we continue with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. God our Creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Um, Stephen, I, I thank you for reading this passage. It's a long one with a lot of hard names. I, I, I love sharing this. I remember one of my first years as a pastor on Pentecost Sunday, 
the gentleman that got up to read the lessons got to the first name and stuttered on the first word. And he said to everybody, and all those names you really don't want to hear me read. And he skipped like six verses. <laughs> okay. So I'll pray for you. Okay. <laughs> Chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in these days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Jesus. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 104. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yeah, the earth is the sea, great and wide. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give it their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Hallelujah. And the shorter second reading will be found from the book of Romans, chapter 8. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So I'm going back to the drum set. Say, the shorter reading I like better, so I'm using that for the sermon, so it is a shorter sermon too. <laughs>
Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, then, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. And I'm going to add half of the next verse where we skip a few, and I love this sentence. Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. And then the gospel reading continues at verse 25. I have said these things to you while I am with, still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Please be seated, and children, I invite you to come up front for the children's sermon, and Sandy to come lead that. Good morning. Are you looking at me like, why do I have this? Yeah, well, I have a reason for it. Trust me. So now I just lost my place. There it is. All right. Now, I could tell you that it's really windy outside, couldn't I? But we're inside. And maybe you don't believe that it's windy out. We could take everybody outside and find out, but that would take a little while, so we won't do that. Well, you can't... Can you see the wind? No, you can't. You can feel it, but yes. So we know it's windy, but can we see it? No. Yeah. When the trees move. So you see the trees moving, but I mean, let's say you're out in the middle of nowhere where there's no trees. Can you see the wind? No. No. Well, that's why I have this pinwheel here. Okay, if I take this pinwheel outside and it's windy, what's it going to do? What? It's going to spin. There's the wind. Okay, it's my wind. Yeah, or I can do this, you know, but if I'm outside and it's windy, it'll spin. Okay? So, that's how we know. We see things moving. All right. Well, most people want to see God so that they can believe in God. Just like we want to see the wind, but we can't see it. Most people want to see God. I would love to see God, wouldn't you? Yeah. But I've never seen him. But I can tell you what I have seen. I've seen a woman and men and faith and courage who did things that amazed me. Sometimes I've seen people in great pain, but they've handled it wonderfully because of their faith in God. I've seen boys and girls who were very happy because they believed God was with them. I've seen old people die in peace because they believe in God and that he would take them to heaven. So I believe all those things. But have I seen God? No. But I still believe. Just like wind. I don't see the wind, but I know it's there. All right? So in other words, I've never seen God, but I've seen the works of God. I've never seen the wind, but I see the works of the wind. So you see, let God work in your life. God will do it if you let God be God. Okay? It's a very important day in the church here because 
by God's wonderful actions, God made the church. This church began a long, long time ago, before any of us. It's a long time ago. Yeah. And God acted, and the people of God show God's actions in the church they built. Okay? So just like the pinwheel shows the wind's actions, okay, we can believe in God that we don't see. Okay? All right, so let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you for you. We thank you for you. We don't see you. We don't see you. But we know you're here. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, Stephen read a small passage from Romans chapter 8, and it's one of my favorite sections in in Scripture. And I'd like to reference not only our second reading today, but I also um, will use a few verses on each side of that today's reading. So I will draw from Romans 8, verses 12 to 27. In Romans 8, the Apostle Paul describes our life as waiting eagerly for the day Jesus comes to take us from this valley of tears, as Luther would call it. That is why Paul describes this patient waiting like that of a woman in labor. As one of my preaching resources says, Few sounds capture a groan like birth pangs. It's the raw sound of life and birth as well as of pain. It is the guttural desire for the end of the waiting for what has been anticipated and desired. For any who have been present through such an event, it's difficult to ever forget. It is in equal parts beautiful, stunning, and holy, as well as raw, painful, and horrific. Creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves groan inwardly while we await for the adoption of our bodies, says, writes Paul to the church in Rome. He describes aptly that painful wail of our souls for the redemption we know so well, the restoration of all things is promised in Christ. I find comfort in the words of Romans 8, 22 to 27, and I'll quote from the New Living Translation. All creation has been groaning in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time, and we believers also groan as in the pains of childbirth, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of the future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us all our full rights as God's adopted children, including the new bodies God promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we do not need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we do not yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example... We do not know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's will. Then in today's second reading, And and as we know that in the cross and the empty tomb of Jesus Christ that we are adopted by God, Paul says we can even address God as Abba. Abba is even more endearing than addressing God as Father. Abba is more like a child saying, Papa, Daddy. Our second reading today shares... For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, 
than heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if in fact we suffer with Him so that we may be also glorified with Him. As the introduction to this reading in our bulletin says, here Paul speaks about the mystery of baptism. Through the Holy Spirit, we are claimed, gathered, and welcomed into Christ's body, the church. And we receive a new name in our adoption, child of God. We are adopted and born of the Spirit. During the baptism, you often will hear me or another pastor say, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. As one of my preaching resources says, by pouring the Holy Spirit into our hearts, God gives us the promised first fruits of eternal life so that we await God's future hope. In the meantime, the Spirit also intercedes for us by carrying the prayers of our weak human hearts to God. The Holy Spirit has made us God's children who eagerly await the glorious future God has prepared for all of creation. Although, as Sandy was talking about, we cannot fully see what God has in store for us and creation, we eagerly anticipate it with hope. Even when we are unable to pray, the same Spirit prays for us. End of quote. Sometimes the best prayer simply is a groan or sigh. I know that to be true. I know the Holy Spirit groans for us, groans on our behalf until the day we enter into God's eternal care where there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more death, and no more crying. No more heartache, no more financial concerns, no more illnesses, and no more strife. Until that day, we and all creation groan inwardly, not unlike the uncontrollable groan from labor pains. Tuesday this week will be 31 years since my dad died at age 52. And Sandy talked in the children's sermon about people of faith being a good example. That was my dad. And I've heard that cry from the Spirit groaning, sighing deep within me. And during that same moment, I also heard the good news of Jesus proclaimed at my dad's funeral in 1991. In the midst of his funeral, though, I had an uncontrollable, guttural groan that turned the heads of many people. It's, in, it's engraved in my memory. But I do know that we have hope in the trying times because Jesus carried our human sin and woundedness in his body on the cross. Jesus wants us to have God's peace, not only through the Holy Spirit in our lives now, but Jesus also comes to us in Holy Communion, which is a foretaste of the heavenly feast to come with peace forever. Until that day, as it says in the Gospel, Jesus has not left us orphaned. We are adopted. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit who prays on our behalf even in our deepest pain and during our greatest joys. That is why in our gospel reading today we hear Jesus say, I have said these things while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you all of what I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit who even knows our inmost thoughts which we would want no one ever to know or to even hear. And for those especially those inmost 
secret thoughts. The Spirit is groaning deeply on our behalf in prayer. Offering us forgiveness. Calling us through the gospel to believe in Jesus and promising us to be raised on the last day to give us eternal life. While I wait and hope for that day, I find comfort in these words from all of Romans chapter 8. But let me summarize it using some words from one of my resources. As disciples of Jesus, we know this all too well as the now but not yet proposition of our faith. We have been told of the return of the Messiah. We prepare for this coming and see how the whole creation groans for her own restoration. We join this creation waiting for our own hearts and souls and bodies to be restored. We know this is coming and is in pains of labor. We groan for this reality. While we wait, we are given a midwife, a spirit of God, to join us in our waiting for the birth of a new world and a new reality. This gift is given this day as we each recall our own baptismal promise. May the Spirit join us in our cry to God, eagerly awaiting the begotten, the Son of God, Jesus. End of quote. This is why, as the living body of Christ, we also bring the gospel message to others, why we help carry their burdens. That's how they see God. And why we pray for others. As theologian Gail Ramshaw says, we in the whole creation are groaning in labor, awaiting the birth of God's new age in which, which Christ's resurrection will renew all things. Until that end time, we have the Spirit who is praying for us before God. Let me conclude. We are adopted by God and born of the Spirit who daily lights the fire of faith within us. Amen. Please stand and join us in singing Light the Fire. I stand to praise you, but I fall to my knees. My spirit is hungry, but my flesh is so been made God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious Bible. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the worship of the Lord our God, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, for people in need, and all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, burst open our locked doors, and by your spirit drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. Work through the ministry of your people, especially all disciples and congregations throughout the world in the ELCA, LRI Lutheran Parish, and the Bureau of County Food Pantry. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us, yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. Bless all newborns, especially Revy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering. And today we pray for Jim, Steve, Peter, Shirley, Doris, Shirley, Alice, Jane, George, Paul, Fran, Terry, Kathy, Dick, Judy, Irma, Jim, Leanne, Porter, Dana, Mona, Deb, Scott, Braden, Ruth, Harry, Lisa, Loretta, Gail, Elizabeth, Sarah, Rita, Beth, Tim, Savannah, Samantha, Lewis, Tom, Emmy, Harlan, Karen, and all victims of disasters and, and, and violence and war, and those impacted by our pandemic in any way. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel. Foster our relationships with partner sins and local ministry partners that our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. Comfort the grieving family of Eleanor. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated now as we receive our tithes and offerings to give to God to support the ministry of mission and God, the gospel here at home and across the world.
I invite you to stand. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. You reach out to us to the seal, and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks for Christ. It is indeed right, her duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the, of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Community will be by continual flow. The ushers will form a single line in the middle aisle, alternating side to side. People will come to me for the bread, the wafer, and go to the corners. Um, people on this side to this corner, people on this side to this corner to get the um, white grape juice or a cup, little cup of red wine. Put the empty cup in the bowl. Return to your seats by the outside aisle. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Please be seated.
changes what we see and what we seek when you come in the room when you do what only you can do changes us it changes what we see and what we see everyone. Volunteers are needed for camera and sound. If you can meet us at the back of the sanctuary Sunday, June 17th and June 19th after service at 1015, we'll show you what's involved, answer questions, and hopefully recruit a few willing volunteers. Kids, mark your calendars for St. Matthew's Youth and Family H2O Olympics, Tuesday, June 21st from 1030 to 1230. Be ready for some water fun, bring a towel, a change of clothes, we're going to get wet, and a packed lunch. Fast Pitch Softball Church League has their first game Friday, June 17th at 8 p.m. St. Matthew's against Bunker Hill. Games are at Westside Park in Princeton. You can get copies of the season's schedule on the table in the lobby. Work Camp is still in need of volunteers to adopt a site for five sites with two crews or 12 people at each site. This requires you to stop by the site and bring drinks and treats while getting to witness some of the awesomeness that is taking place in Bureau County. 
a sign-up sheet is in the narthex. Or come see me if you have questions. Work camp is the week of June 26th through July 2nd, so you would have to be available to do this. Or you can come see me if you're able to purchase the treats. It is really awesome when you can come to the site and meet with the kids, and they just they love it so much. Um, and we have youth participating too, so you might look out and land at one of our sites. Come celebrate our renovations Sunday, June 26th after worship. Check out our mowing, weed eating, and spraying schedule on a clipboard in the narthex. See if you are able to help with that. You can still donate non-perishable food items or home supplies to the Bureau County Food Pantry by placing them in the food pantry box in the narthex. Money put in the penny prayer jar also goes to the Bureau County Food Pantry through the month of June. There is drive through communion today at 1045 in the church parking lot. Home communion delivery will be on the third Sunday of the month, June 19th. You can prearrange this with Pastor. And join us today after worship for coffee and fellowship in the share room. Thank you. I would say two things about the announcements. I think you said Sunday, June 17th for the first video. It's June 12th. That's next Sunday. I maybe heard that. But anyway, it's, it, it's next Sunday. Okay, a lot of dates there. The, the other thing I would add, for all, all the congregations that are participating and sending people to work camp in Bureau County, I don't mean this, this more as information rather than trying to pressure somebody, but we're one of the few congregations who have not signed up to provide treats to um, the work sites. So there is a great need for that. So if you can do that, think about that and see that sign-up sheet. It's out in that um, little short table close to what the old restroom would be. So. Well, they can donate or they can sign up for a day or they can sign up for the whole week. Yeah. We've had both. Yeah, we've had both. So with that, I invite you to stand for the benediction. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.